Hello again, this is Nigel and Kerry. Um, we're going to do, yeah, sorry, wave. We're going to do something slightly different today. It's uh, similar to our um, common questions when doing outreach, uh, but this is actually a response video. It's the first response video we've ever done, so forgive us if it's a bit of a mashup, but hey, we're going to try our best. Um, this video came up on my uh, YouTube feed the other day. I'll be honest, I've never even heard of this channel. It's, uh, what's it called? Grade A Under A. He's got 3.76 million subscribers with 120 videos at time of recording. So he's clearly really popular. Sorry if I've never heard of you before, but I guess there's a lot of videos out there. Um, as you can see, it's uh, questions I've always wanted to ask a vegan. So Kerry and me are vegan so are you vegan i'm vegan we're both vegan so we thought we'd um respond to the video it's uh, relatively light-hearted i don't think he's being mean in this i genuinely don't think he's being mean i think he's making a light-hearted video a lot of his other videos are light-hearted uh, so we'll take it in that spirit but we will give real answers so without further ado let's crack on with it see what he says animals we all love animals mate and no one loves them as much as we do. Except maybe zoophiles. <laughs> zoophiles, yeah. Yeah, vegans don't necessarily love animals, actually. That's a common misconception. They just don't like animals to suffer. You don't have to love someone to not want them to suffer. So if, if I don't love a person, that doesn't mean that I don't want them to suffer. There's a lot of vegans that don't even like animals at all. And there's plenty in our friend circle that I can think of that don't like animals, but they're still activists. Yeah, it's just the injustice of it. But anyway, carry on. So all vegans want to do is end the suffering of animals, right? Yes. Yeah, we want to end the suffering of animals. It's as simple as that. We just want animals to live their life without suffering. That's what veganism is all about. Somehow, they're almost universally hated. True. Yeah, why do you think that is? Because we present people with the reality of their food choices. Yeah, and uh, we force them to think of... Well, you started off the video by saying we all love animals, but you can't love someone and eat them at the same time. Um, so it's the cognitive dissonance. So they don't hate us. I think they hate the reality of what we're telling, what them. We're telling them. Yeah. No, 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 right? That's actually kind of impressive. Now, how the fuck did that mean? But as annoying as they are, right? I think I've had some mistakes that vegans have been doing. I also. Guarantee you haven't found a mistake. Um, we've been doing this long enough now that you, you haven't found a mistake. Maybe you found a misunderstanding that you have, but I guarantee you haven't found a mistake. But let's hear what you've got to say. Right? There's a few things about veganism that I don't understand. Such a Okay, so you don't understand them. That doesn't make it a mistake. It means that you don't understand that. You better understand the vegan coat a little better, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're still, we're going to stop this. This is going to take forever. There's a amount of time we're stopping. Vegan Veganism isn't a cult. It's an ethical way of living. It's not a cult. You leave a cult when you become vegan. Yeah, you, you're, you're in a cult at the moment. You're in the carnist cult because you think that it's right to eat animals. I have a few questions, mate. So I'll present to you, right, part one of questions I've always wanted to ask a vegan. But I can't, because they're a little bit scary. You can. You can ask us anything. Come to our channel. We haven't got quite as many subscribers as you. I think we've got like 105. <laughs> so we're a little way behind 152. you. 152. Oh, 152. Sorry, 152. A um, little bit, a little bit. Is that closer to where he is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bit closer, but not, not terribly close. But yeah, come and ask us. Come on to our channel. We'll, we'll happily answer any questions you have. You say this is part one. I hope you've got several other parts because we're happy to respond to all of them. No such thing as a silly question. Let's go. Oh, listen, here's the thing, right? I don't 100% fully understand what you can and can't do as a vegan. Let me what you can and can't do, you can do anything you like. It's not what you can't do, it's what we choose not to do. We choose not to harm animals, we choose not to exploit them. So again, that's a misconception, is that your vegans can't do X. It's not, vegans choose not to do X. Would you agree? 
Listen, now get the whole thing about eating fruits and vegetables is fine, but eating meat is unethical, right? Because animals have to die to give us meat, obviously. But why can't you have eggs and milk? Not meat. You want to take this one? Because the dairy and egg industry is the same as the meat industry, that they ultimately end up going to the slaughterhouse and they spend their whole lives suffering, and it's incredibly short lives. So, for instance, um, the male chicks in the egg industry, they're killed as soon as they're born because then they're, they're not profitable, you know, they're not going to earn the farmer any money. Um, so in this country, I think we actually suffocate or gas them. Um, many countries um, macerate them, so they put them on a conveyor belt to sex them. Um, those that are girls will be raised and um, used for egg laying and the males will be sent into a mincer. Literally a macerator, it yeah. grinds them up alive. Yeah, and that's seconds after hatching, so that is slaughtering an animal. Similarly, in the dairy industry, um, the male calves are, are killed just a couple of hours after birth. Generally, they'll be bludgeoned to death or they'll be shot because, again, there isn't much call for males in the dairy industry. You know, you need a couple for um, providing semen and things, but generally speaking, they're, they're not going to be... Um, of much use to the farmer. Of um, Some farmers keep them on for veal for a couple of months, but again, veal babies are slaughtered. That is that is the whole purpose of veal. Um, so, yeah. And the females are kept on and they have the same life cycle as their mum. They're forcibly impregnated. They give birth. They're separated from their babies. And then after about four or five pregnancies, she's sent off to the slaughterhouse as well. Yeah, so her milk yield will go down every time she gets pregnant. And they're pregnant for about nine months, the same as a human. So they're pregnant for nine months. They give birth to a calf. The calf's taken away from them. Their milk's pretty much straight away. Um, after five or six years, their milk yield starts to decline and they're sent off to be slaughtered. Cows would normally live to be 18, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that Kerry didn't cover was about the, the egg industry. Obviously, she said about the males being killed, but the females, they lay eggs. after They lay so many eggs a year. I think it's about 300 plus eggs a year that yeah. they lay. So. It used to be about 6 to 12 in, in nature, but we've modified hens to the point of the extreme. And she loses about 20% of her body's calcium every time she lays an egg. So she's absolutely riddled with osteoporosis um, by the time she's sent off for slaughter. And uh, yeah, which isn't very, very long. I think it's only one to two years for an egg yeah, laying. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so again, they lay egg after egg after egg after egg, and it just—it's a horrible life for them. And both milk and eggs are things that we categorically don't need in our diet. So, all this suffering to give us milk and eggs is for things that we just don't need. So, if right. an animal suffers to give us those things and we don't need those things, why would you make them suffer? Again, it goes back to what you said before about veganism is about stopping suffering. Cows and chickens don't die to make eggs and milk, right? But they just pop out eggs and milk as part of being alive. So why not have some? Because eggs and milk come from factory farms, which are cruel, right? And by eating them, you're contributing to that. Yeah, yeah, I get that, right? But what if you had cows and chickens yourself, right? And you were nice to them? Yep. Don't say this one. One, cows don't give milk naturally. Um, he, he said, you know, that they produce them just by simply being alive. Um, cows don't simply produce milk by being alive. They have, they're alive. They have to be pregnant in order to produce milk like all mammals. And again, we covered this just um, a little moment ago about saying that she has to be forcibly impregnated in order to, to get pregnant. But even in the best case scenario, and she isn't inseminated by farm workers and she's um, made pregnant by the bull, she's still going to go through that life cycle. She's still going to go through that cycle of having her babies wrenched away. So even on organic farms, free range farms, though, to be honest, there isn't that much difference. And in honesty, organic farming, if we were to go down that route, we're already occupying over a third of the land's um, ice free, you know, patch of land, so the world's ice free patch of land. So you know, if we if every single person on this planet ate organic um, and drank organic milk, then we would be in big trouble. You know, we yeah, wouldn't we just have, don't the, have the capacity. But even so, um, as Kerry said, the mothers are artificially inseminated, um, even if they're uh, inseminated naturally by the bull. Um, 
they still go through a nine month pregnancy to give up their milk. Um, they've been selectively bred over generations to give more milk than the calf actually needs. So they give significantly more milk than the calf actually needs. And the calf never gets a look in anyway. Calf never gets a look in anyway. But even if the calf had everything that, that he or she needed, there'd be still plenty of milk left over, which I guess you're saying, well, that's an argument. Why don't we just drink that? But this causes so much pain and suffering. Mastitis. Mastitis and that sort of thing for the cow. Um, so we do have to milk them if we've made them pregnant, but let's just not make them pregnant in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the eggs? The egg industry, yeah. If you, This is commonly termed the backyard hen. So if you've got your own hens in the backyard and they just lay their eggs, as we've already said, they lay 300 plus eggs a year and it just it takes, takes it out of them. So even if it's not in a factory, I get what you're saying about the factory farms. The factory farms are undoubtedly terrible, but even backyard hens, they still suffer in the same way and they still get calcium deficiency and that sort of thing and and, and they quite often suffer massively um, from giving that many eggs. The hens are supposed to consume their own eggshells in order to replenish their calcium which of course doesn't often happen but I mean even if you you have your own hens in your back garden and you feed the um, feed the shells back to her it's, honestly she's she's going to be in pain when she's when she's Putting those eggs out, you know. Yeah, so yeah. and many many hens do get egg uh, egg bound, and you know it's not good for them at all. And again, all this is for eggs and milk that we just don't need. So we don't need it. So why even bother? I'm not saying you're an animal lover, right? And you got lots of land, right? And you decide to buy some chickens and cows. And you love them and you cherish them like your fucking Mary Poppins or something, right? Oh my God, you spend all day hugging them and kissing them and singing songs to them and providing them with everything they need to have the best life, right? And you're doing so. I look at that, mate. But again, their best life is being left alone. They don't need to be artificially inseminated. They don't need to have their eggs stolen. Uh, there's a lot of evidence that shows that if hens... Uh, don't have their eggs taken away they actually stop laying because in nature they lay clutches of three four five six and then they hatch them so from the psychological perspective she lays an egg comes back the next day where's it gone? gone where's it gone is she gonna lay more she keeps on laying more so just leave her with the eggs let her lay a clutch of three four five six and then she'll stop so no matter how nicely you treat them you're still harming the animals I'll pop a few eggs, right, and I'll scratch some milk into a conveniently paid bottle. So why can't you have those? Now why is there no such a thing as vegan milk and vegan eggs? Do you know what I mean? Because, mate, that is a billion dollar idea, is it not? And God knows you skinny as fucking vegans could do with the pop. <laughs> there is such thing as vegan eggs and vegan milk. An uh, endless supply of both. And... That is very much not what vegans look like. There are countless <laughs> vegan athletes that are absolutely ripped. We're not one of them. I, I've just sort of set my shirt off then, but, know, but I'll spare you that. We're junk food vegans and proud of it, you know. You can get chubby vegans, you can get skinny vegans, you can get absolutely athletic, out-of-this-world vegans that look like, like superheroes. Me. Yeah. Like me. But, uh, yeah, it's... But, yeah, you can, but vegan milk is called plant milk. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Vegan eggs, there's lots of egg replacements that you can have. Countless. Count we have everything. We have scrambled egg, but it's tofu. We have omelettes. We have um, egg and soldiers. We make rice pudding with our milk. We have cereals. We have everything that you could possibly have using cow's milk or hen's eggs. You know, we're not missing anything. Yeah. And I wish I was that thing, to be honest. No, you <laughs> do. No, I don't. Yeah. Protein, do you know what I mean? Jesus Christ! Now the definition of veganism by the vegan society says veganism aims to exclude all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals, right? And these eggs and milk were gone with zero exploitation of cruelty to animals. No but that's the point. You haven't got them from zero exploitation and cruelty. We've just explained how you're exploiting and being cruel to those animals. So you're right about the definition, but you're wrong about getting egg and milk Without it's not understanding the process that you're missing here. I think that more research is warranted. Yeah. None of that, right? Just hugs and kisses. 
So if vegans love and cherish their own cows and chickens, right? Can't they enjoy a nice egg omelette with a tall glass of milk? We do. We have omelettes and we have milk. It's just plant-based. No! No animal products are our grave! Even if the animals are nothing but love! Because... Uh, um... Because we've just explained. Uh, because we can't have anything that comes from an animal. Period. Vegan logic. Yeah, you know? hens periods. Exactly. Yeah, vegan logic. We've literally just talked you through it. It is vegan logic. We are logical. We're not being illogical. <laughs> Shit. Um, okay, mate. That leads me to another question. Okay. So I that I can't eat an animal because that means I'd have to kill it, right? Which is suffering. I can't have eggs or milk either that come from an animal, obviously. Could that be exploiting an animal? Somehow. I don't know, right? But We've just explained how you're exploiting it, but carry on. What if I had no involvement with the animal at all? Now, say I'm walking along and I see a cow, right? And oh my god, it drops dead right there and then. Lucky me! I mean, oh no! How sad! Listen! I didn't kill it, right, or exploit it in any way. So since it's not breaking the two major rules of veganism, right, can I pop it on the grill and have some burgers with the boys? Nah! Shall I take this one? Um, you're right, essentially. There is no cruelty and no exploitation. Except for the cow being in the field and being exploited and obviously that occurring yeah. before death. This is, this is more commonly termed the, uh, the roadkill situation so rather than your scenario of just seeing a cow in the field which as Kerry has just said is almost certainly in that field because she's already been she's exploited. already been exploited being a farmed animal but let's say you're just driving along and you see a rabbit or a deer or something that's been hit hit by a car or a lorry and is dead by the side of the road so you had nothing to do with it um the animal was dead before you arrive you've not been cruel to them you've not exploited them then vegans have various views on that my personal view is if you want to eat that roadkill go ahead because as you said you're not being cruel to the animal you're not exploiting the animal however i would say that animals quite often are treated with no dignity at all so if you really do love animals, shouldn't you treat them with dignity? And let's take the scenario where it's not a cow. Let's take the scenario where it's a, it's a dog or a cat. If you saw a dog or a cat just dead in a field or by the side of the road, would you choose to eat that dog or cat? If you've ever had pets in your life, if you had a companion dog or a companion cat, when they died, what did you do with them? Did you cremate them or bury them or did you eat them? Did you treat them with a bit of respect because you loved them? See, we're coming about loving animals. If you really loved animals, you don't exploit them, even in death. So while technically I would say that eating roadkill is vegan, I would say that out of respect for the animal, I personally would not choose to eat that animal's flesh or wear her leather or whatever. Um, the other aspect of it is you're also depriving other wild animals of having a meal. So we can wander into the supermarket and we can buy yeah. plant-based foods. We can buy all these wonderful, you know, veggies and grains and everything. Whereas an animal that's tragically died, I mean, I don't think it would be the case with a cow anyway, because obviously in reality, the farmer would come along and remove the cow and no one would be eating her anyway. But in the case of any normal roadkill then you know another animal's gonna make use of that particularly crows and you know other predatory animals that might not have eaten for days whereas yeah what? so you're stealing the food of another animal essentially mm -hmm. yeah oh just because it's dead doesn't mean you can now exploit it you prick what okay what if i don't eat it right maybe i'm just cold and i want its coat no Okay, what if I just want, like, a tooth to make a pretty necklace? No, Greg, no using dead animal, right? For any reason at all. Okay, fine. Why would you want to wear teeth? <laughs> and, and we've already covered this about the leather, leather jacket. Yeah, technically you're not harming the animal, but you're normalising um, animal exploitation. Wearing skin. Wearing skins, which isn't a great idea.
Um, but technically, there's nothing really wrong with it from a vegan perspective other than you're normalizing the exploitation of animals. Because when someone sees you wearing that leather jacket, they don't know that it's from an animal that would die dead at the side of the road. They think it's an animal that was reared for leather. And if you think that you no. can, oh, if, if you think that you can skin a cow and turn it into leather and do that turnaround all by yourself, then congrats to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and now it's leather sofa. Now, great. Just check in. Recently, okay. vegans basically hate one thing in life, right? And that is people who hurt and kill animals. And a quick question for any vegans who are religious, right? If God wanted us to be vegan, why is it that I cry when I cut into an onion, but not a chicken? <laughs> because if God wanted me to be a vegan, right, surely he'd make me cry every time I cut into flesh and meat. But no, he made me cry when I cut into an onion, a vegetable. Chat ma- You do this one, you're good at religion. <laughs> If you someone if you're someone who believes in God, then you'll know that God's original idea and you know ideal was the Garden of Eden, and the Garden of Eden was where people lived on fruit and seeds, and man and animal, every kind of animal lived all together in harmony. So, yeah, if you're a believer in God, then I would firmly suggest having a look at that. That's the Christian God, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so Eden, Adam and Eve were vegan. Animals didn't harm each other in the Garden of Eden. It's only after the fall that we started to eat animals and animals started to eat each other. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of chapters in the Bible that relate to veganism. My favourite one is Romans 14, 21, for it is better not to eat meat. Um, if God really does love animals, which he clearly does, then he doesn't want us to eat them. He wants us to eat plants. Plants don't have a central nervous system. Animals do. So to cause no suffering we eat plants rather than animals so god did give us food to eat that doesn't cause pain harm or suffering they are called plants so not gotcha vegan but nice try hey vegans another question right can vegans eat mushrooms well, listen, I know you might hear that and think that's a stupid question, right? But apparently, according to science, mushrooms are genetically closer to humans than they are plants. So if we go by that logic, right, doesn't that mean that if you eat mushroom, you're closer to being a cannibal? <laughs> then you are a vegan. Ah, disgusting! Call yourself a vegan cannibal! Listen, so if you ever see a vegan eating a mushroom, right, you smack him in the face and make sure you turn the tables on him, right? lecture him on the inhumane food choices he's making fake vegan cunt <laughs> that's actually quite funny i have heard that before personally i'm not a massive mushroom lover you love mushrooms don't you but um i do eat them but i'm not a massive mushroom lover i also like biting people so <laughs> yeah i think the crucial point and i think you know that you missed that i think that last one was really tongue-in-cheek um was that, yeah, I think as far as I'm aware, you are correct that we are genetically closer to mushrooms than mushrooms are to plants. <laughs> we mushrooms, yeah. Um, but it's all about feeling pain. And to the best of my knowledge, mushrooms do not have a central nervous system nor any other capacity to feel pain. Therefore... Until eating, it's proven that they do? Until yeah. it's proven that they do, we'll carry on eating them. Um Plants don't feel pain, mushrooms don't feel pain, animals do. It's not rocket science. Right, let's hear your final word now. And that's the video. Listen, I've got more questions for vegans, right? Enough for three other videos, right? But I'll upload those another time. Let me know what you find the most annoying about vegans in the comments below. And maybe I'll make a part five, mate. And we look forward to parts two, three, four, and five. And if you think we're annoying, come over to our website, come over to our channel and interact with us. Um, don't be nasty, because we can be very nasty back, but we'll try not to be. We'll try to be nice to you. Um, if you've got genuine questions, please ask us them, and we'll make response videos to any questions that you put in our comments, any questions that you put in this comment. And when you release parts two, three, four, and five, or however many you want to do, we'll answer those as well. And just to prove that we're not skinny. What are we doing? We're showing bellies. Do we look skinny? <laughs> Do we?
he certainly not <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why we did that, but anyway, there you go. But I really enjoyed this, actually. I think we're going to do more of this. <laughs> don't know how it's going to turn out, but yeah. Um, I appreciate your video. It was semi tongue in cheek, but it raised some good points as well, I think. Um, there's no such thing as a silly question. Uh, we genuinely want people to go vegan. And if you have questions that you need answering, if you think you've got a gotcha, then tell us, ask us. We've been doing this for a long time now, and I can't remember the last time I had a question that I'd not heard before. So many times people think, oh, I've got you, this is really a question. I bet you've never heard this before. And we go, yeah, hmm, heard it yesterday. So, yeah. Mushroom? Mushroom was well, actually that was quite original, I suppose. Yeah, that was quite original. So, kudos there. But anyway, um, I think we're going to leave it there. So, I've been Nigel. Or oh, I've not been Nigel. I am Nigel. And <laughs> this is Kerry. I'm Kerry. Do you think Kerry? Um, and yeah. And, and the invisible dog was Vanica. Oh, did we? Have, did she come on screen? No. Oh, <laughs> our dog's Vanica around somewhere. Um, so, yeah, please, if you've enjoyed this, uh, we've enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Bye.